Hello, good morning, I mean good afternoon everybody. I'm uh, Jeanne McCulloch and this is the panel, The Fragility of Families. So if you're in the wrong room, we won't mind if you sneak out. Just wanna make sure everybody is here for the right thing. Um, I'm very honored to be the moderator on this panel uh, of three extraordinary novelists and I want to introduce them, but before I do that, the, people, the good people of the Brooklyn Book Festival have asked me to let you guys know that the books by the authors in this program can be purchased from Greenlight Bookstore outside the building where the authors will also be signing their books immediately following this program. So authors, at the conclusion of the program, please go directly to your signing tables. Um, on a personal note, I myself just published a memoir, the title of which is All Happy Families. So I've been thinking about the topic of the fragility of family for a very, very long time. And to see it rendered uh, so exquisitely by these three writers with these three novels was a real pleasure to read. So, on we go. These three novels by these three distinctive writers each tell the story of a generation coming of age in a time of societal change. Questions of tradition and family legacy versus individual identity and growth provide in each work a rich tapestry. The characters and their separate stories are the strands of silk that are woven throughout. These three novelists bring the voices of their characters, if you will, the strands of their family tapestry and their story to light in all their full-throated yet complex and conflicted glory. Their themes, which we'll be looking at, are home and homeland as a harbor and a place of memory, love, and nostalgia, yet also as a place of incrimination judgment that lies without the bonds of tradition and society in which they've grown up. So it's the interplay of family life and national history. Where is the human heart in the complex and difficult tapestry of legacy? And how do characters look at their own story woven into the family history and define their role? And importantly, how do they define their future? I'd like now to introduce our panelists. Preeti Taneja has written a novel called We That Are Young. It's been spoken of as a modern day King Lear set in contemporary India. It's the tale of a battle for power within a wealthy yet turbulent family for status within a nation in a constant state of transformation and for the love and respect of a father who is disappearing into dementia. It's told in six distinctive narrative voices of the central characters those voices are interspersed throughout the novel. We That Are Young examines the strains of loyalty and dynasty and individual identity within a generation coming of age. Preeti was born in India, in, I'm sorry, in England to Indian parents. She's worked with youth charities and with refugees and in conflict and post-conflict zones on minority and cultural rights. She teaches writing in prisons and universities. She's the co-founder of the advocacy collective ERA Films and a visual verse, an online anthology of art and words. In 2018, she was awarded the Desmond Elliott Prize for We That Are Young. Hector Abad's the, in the his uh, novel, The Farm, three siblings, Pilar, Eva, and Antonio, take turns telling the story of their family home, named The Farm, after they inherited at their mother's passing. The three siblings are the last heirs of a farm called La Aculta. In The Farm, 
Hector Abad illuminates the vicissitudes of family and of people, as well as the voices of these three siblings at the moment they're about to lose the paradise in which they built their dreams. This is an examination of home as both a blessing and burden. Hector Abad is one of Colombia's leading writers. In 1987, his father was murdered by Colombian paramilitaries, an event he reflected on 20 years later in Oblivion, a memoir, which earned widespread critical acclaim, as well as the Wola Duke Book Award. Abad writes a weekly column for Colombia's national newspaper, El Spectador. The Farm, his most recent publication, won the 2015 Calamo Prize in Spain and was shortlisted for, shortlisted for the Mario Vargas Llosa Prize. Peromol, Peromol Murugan was born into a family of small farmers in northern Kongunadu region, yes, in the state of Tamil Nadu in the south of India. He's a professor of Tamil literature with a doctorate in Tamil studies and the author of 10 novels five collections of short stories and poems, as well as 10 books of nonfiction, in addition to editing several fiction and nonfiction anthology. His latest novel, One Part Woman, is the story of a childless couple and their struggle to create an heir and how the expectation of their community fractures the delicate bond of their union. It has the lush quality of a fable yet it depicts all too real strains in society and in familial love and legacy. It has just been long listed for the National Book Award for the best book in translation. Uh, it was greeted with controversial backlash from caste leaders in Murugan's home state and censorship for frank depictions of small town life. Murugan won a landmark court case in 2016 defending the rights of artists, their freedom of expression, and depicting critically their own communities. So welcome to the three of you. I'd like to ask you all, by way of introduction, if you would just say a little something about yourselves and about your, um, your work, and uh, what is home to you? What does that word mean in this context? Preeti. Hi, thank you so much for coming and thank you to the festival for having me in that lovely introduction. Um, okay, so We That Are Young is the story of these five young people and they come from a very wealthy background. Um, they live in India and they are inheriting a colonial legacy and a capitalist legacy which has really ruined them in a way um, and what they are going to do with that legacy and how they're going to manage their family and the country that they are going to basically run through the fact that they own this huge business is the subject of the book. Um, in the context of myself in this book, uh, because I was born in the UK and I grew up there, the idea that I would be re kind of rewriting Shakespeare and setting it in India was at first quite difficult for people to get their heads around when the book first went out on submission. Um, it's been a really long journey, so about seven, seven years um, to get to this point. And wow. one of those reasons is because our ideas of home can be quite fixed. So where does a person who has lots of different hybrid identities inside them and is made of different texts, in a way, belong? That is something that I tried to think through when I was writing. And I really wanted to bring together the two sides of my cultural life, um, the Indian side and the, I suppose, Western cultural side. Shakespeare is the central icon of that, but the book also weaves in a lot of Indian myths and legends. It draws on the Bhagavad Gita, it draws on um, the Upanishads, it draws on some of the more misogynistic aspects of the culture and the tradition to really put together a book which is really dark. It's based on Lear at the end of the day. I don't think I'm spoiling the ending for anybody by saying that. Um, and what it's trying to do is say what happens after we close the book. And I think that idea was taken from Shakespeare's 
own last lines in King Lear, which are, we that are young shall never see so much nor live so long. And that is where the title of the book comes from. Thank you. Hector? Uh, thank you, Jane, for your introduction. Um, I was in, in the archipelago stand some minutes ago, and I saw um, a children's book uh, that is called My Valley, Valley or something like that. And it was written, My Valley is the most beautiful valley of the world. And I remember then uh, a very beautiful poem by, uh, by Pessoa, by one of his names, Alberto Caeiro. And this poem begins, I, I, I always love this poem, because it's for the concept of home, I think is very, is very important. And it says, mm, uh, the Tagus is more beautiful than the river that runs through my village. But the Tagus is less beautiful than the river that runs through my village, because the Tagus is not the river that runs across my village. So uh, in La Oculta, in the farm, there is a valley that probably is not the most beautiful valley in the world, but I consider that valley the most beautiful uh, valley in the world. And the, there is not the Tagus there, but the, another small river without ships or anything. It's a small river that is called uh, uh, El Cartama, the Cartama River. And, uh, well, um, that, that farm was in the hands of uh, my great-grandparents, and then my grandfather, and then my father. And uh, the, this is a novel. It's not exactly uh, a non-fiction book, book, but it's based on this, uh, on this farm, on this land that is in the middle of the mountains of Antioquia. And in some ways, that is home for me. But it's a difficult house. It's a difficult home. Uh, and, and home is also probably the place where everything is terrible, the place where everything is dirty, violent, the place that you many times have hated, but the place that you cannot not love. In, in even with all these defects, with, with all these terrible things. So yes, it's, it's a story of a farm, uh, of a town, of a village, without the Tagus River, with a small river that I, I really love. And um, well, this, uh, this is the fourth of my books that has been translated, three of them by Anne McLean, who's here. And I, I'm really grateful with, uh, with, with Jill uh, from Archipelago because translating books is not a tradition in, in America. Well, I think they, they are not very interested in translations. Well, we, we do regard it as an art, however. Okay, <laughs> as an art of a very few uh, <laughs> inside artists. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, I should say that Murugan is going to speak with the help of his translator. So, go ahead, you guys. language. Tamil la na yelidra. Ennu daya putangal ipa sami betulle inge U.S. edition aha beli da patrigde. Adi anak keperiye sando samtara kudi oru shiyam. Dil lama inda festival le inge ungo munala pesar dikke kadechae oru vibe hum. Anak ke rumbo sando samtara kudi yada aha irikiru. Good evening to one and all present here. I come from South India. Tamil Nadu. I speak Tamil, which is one of the Dravidian languages. I write my books in Tamil. My book has been published here. Um, some of my books have been published here by the US edition. And today, I'm happy to address the gathering here.
எனக்கு என்னைய பற்றி அறிமுகப்படுத்திக்கணும் அப்படின்னு சொன்னால் நான் ஒரு கவர்மெண்ட் ஆர்ட்ஸ் காலேஜில் தமிழ் லிட்ரேச்சர் கற்பிக்கக்கூடிய ஆசிரியராக வேலை செய்கிறேன் பகுதி நேரமாக தான் நான் எழுதுகிறேன் ஆனால் அதையெல்லாம் விட நான் வந்து ஒரு அடிப்படையில் ஒரு விவசாய குடும்பத்திலிருந்து வந்தவன் ஒரு முப்பது வயசு வரைக்குமே விவசாயம் தான் என்னுடைய அடிப்படை தொழிலாக இருந்தது அதனால் இப்பவும் கூட மனசளவில் பார்த்தா நான் வந்து விவசாயி தான் நான் இப்போவும் எல்லாத்துக்கும் சொல்கிறது என்ன அப்படின்னு சொன்னால் நான் என்னுடைய ரிட்டையர்மெண்ட்டுக்கு அப்புறம் ஒரு விவசாய வேலையை தான் நான் செய்வேன் என்னுடைய ஃப்யூச்சர் வந்து விவசாயத்தில் தான் இருக்கும் அப்படின்னு நான் சொல்லுவேன் அந்த அடிப்படையில் விவசாயம் தான் விவசாயின்னு சொல்லிக்கிறது தான் எனக்கு ரொம்ப பெருமை தரக்கூடிய ஒரு விஷயமாக எனக்கு இருக்குது to say about myself i am a professor uh, teaching tamil in government arts college i write books uh, only part time i am a part time writer to be specific i come from a background of family uh, who are farmers 30 years my life my basic living has been only uh, farming by heart i feel more than a writer i feel as a farmer even today i'll say to everyone that after retirement i will do only farming i'm happy to be a farmer enakku andha mari oru vyavsaya vaalkai la irundadunala enakku veedu abdingira oru vishayam enakku undu adu kattadangal kattadam adu kulla manidhargal vasikkiradhukku abdingira andha concept purinjadhe enakku oru kedathila oru 15 20 vayasula dhaan எங்கள் வாழ்க்கை விவசாயிகளுடைய வாழ்க்கை பார்த்தீங்கன்னா எப்போதும் ஒரு வெட்ட வெளியில் தான் எங்கள் தமிழ்நாட்டில் ரொம்ப பனி குளிர் அதெல்லாம் இருக்காது மழை அளவாக பெய்யக்கூடிய ஒரு பகுதி அதனால் விவசாயிகள் வந்து ஸ்பேஸ் தான் அவங்க வாழக்கூடிய இடமாக இருக்கும் சின்ன வீடுகள் இருக்கும் அந்த வீடுகள் எல்லாமே அது வந்து தானியங்களை பாதுகாத்து வைக்கிறதுக்கான ஒரு இடமாக தான் அது இருந்தது மற்றபடி சமையல் தூக்கம் எல்லாமே வந்து வெட்ட வெளி தான் ஆனால் எனக்கு வந்து வீடு அப்படிங்கிறது இன்னும் இன்றைக்கு வரைக்கும் ஒரு ரூம்குள்ளே அடைஞ்சிருக்கிறதுங்கிறதோ ஒரு வீட்டுக்குள்ளே சில நாட்கள் இருக்கிறது அப்படிங்கிறதோ எனக்கு ரொம்பவும் கஷ்டம் ஒரு ரொம்ப ஒரு பெரிய அறையாக இருந்துன்னா கொஞ்சம் என்னால் இருக்க முடியும் ரொம்ப சின்னதாக இருந்தாலாம் என்னால் இருக்கவே முடியாது ஏன்னு சொன்னால் எனக்கு அந்த ஸ்பேஸ் வந்து வேணும் அது காற்று வானத்தை பார்க்கணும் அந்த மாதிரி இருந்தால் தான் எனக்கு வந்து பிடிக்கும் அதனால தான் என்னால் நகரங்களில் இருக்கவே முடியறதில்ல இன்றைக்கி வரைக்கும் என் மனசில் வீடுங்கிறது அந்த மாதிரி தான் தானியங்கள் சே போ பாதுகாத்து வைக்கக்கூடிய ஒரு இடம் அப்படிங்கிறது தான் என்னுடைய எண்ணம் டு மீ ஹோம் இஸ் இஸ் மேட் ஆஃப் பிரேக்ஸ் அண்ட் பீப்புள் லிவிங் தேர் திஸ் கான்செப்ட் ஐ அண்டர்ஸ்டூட் ஒன்லி வென் ஐ வாஸ் அரவுண்ட் ஃபிஃப்டீன் ஆர் டுவெண்ட்டி இயர்ஸ் ஓல்ட் ஆஸ் அ ஃபார்மர் அண்ட் லிவிங் அ ஃபார்மர்ஸ் லைஃப் மோஸ்ட் ஆஃப் ஐ லைஃப் ஐ ஹட் லிவ்ட் ஒன்லி இன் த அவுட்டர் ஸ்பேஸ் um i come from the place where there is not much of snow is there we have very little rains and for me house is just a place where we preserve the grains including uh, the sleep or whatever we do we cook everything we do only in the outer space so as a personality i don't like to be inside a small house i always like to be uh, in the outer space enjoying the breeze and um, i wanted to look at the sky that's how i am that's why i'm not able to live in cities till now because of its busy um busyness that must make today a bit of a challenge you talk about busy around here good busy though um one word that murugan used uh was heart and that's something i wanted to talk a bit about i believe uh hector dwight garner in our uh, reviewing the farm in the New York Times pointed out that in Spanish memory recordar has at its heart at its core core c o r the word heart and the way in which all three of you in your work have examined the beating heart that is within memory and <clears throat> excuse me that is within the drama of a family seat 
uh, is something that's very interesting. Preeti and Hector, you've both used multiple voices to tell your story, and I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that decision in terms of narrative, because to my mind, it seems to open up what families really have, which is multiple versions of the same story and multiple takes on what they want to accomplish if they need to break up the family home. So if you guys could talk a little bit about those choices in terms of narrative and how your characters came to you. Well, I, um, I really wanted to tell this story from the perspective of five young people. Um, and the reason that I did that was because I did want to, to investigate what, exactly what you said, but also because there is a sense of hearts trying to connect and structures keeping them separate. So even though it is very difficult for women, for example, to be in a sisterhood, um, they're always striving to in this novel. And despite you know, a scene at the very beginning of the book which seeks to divide them from each other because they have to compete with each other for their father's love, and that test is set by their father them himself. It's a test that he they've undergone all of their lives. All through the book, these different voices will express that they're trying to find their way back to each other. Whether or not they're successful at that is another question because unfortunately these structures of power will always seek to pull them apart. And they're not just structures on the outside, but they're structures that live within them as well. And by using these different voices, I was able to play with the idea of doubt. Um, I never want to say this is the only truth because I don't really think that such a thing can exist, um, especially when you have a family. Um, so. I guess that's why, and one thing that you should also know is that these five voices are told from a sort of second person or third person perspective, and the one voice that gets to speak from his own perspective is their father's, and that was a very distinct choice that I made to, to try to question in my own mind and the reader's mind whose truth gets believed. Thank you. Well, uh, while Perumal was talking, I was thinking about the memory of the farm, because we are not farmers anymore, but in the family there is the memory of when my grandfather was a farmer and my great-grandfather was a farmer. And uh, it was the land and the possibility of, a, not a very big land, but the possibility of having a piece of land that took my family and my father was the first generation out of this very hard work of the land and going to the city and going to the university. He, he was the first one in a, in a long history of, of farmers. So, but when you leave the farm and, and you don't sell the farm, but the farm is still there, maybe divided because of because you are many children and they have to divide the land. You have, you have that heritage and you have to decide what to do with that. And if your father or your grandfather tell you, told you that everything you have comes from that land and everything you are is that small village or town that is named Jericho, Jericho, a very biblical name, and they tell you that they come probably from Spain and probably from a Jewish, uh, un, uh, un, well, under um, covered Jewish, I don't know, uh, conversos, they say in Spanish, marranos. So you, this, this, is, this is heavy. You don't know what to do. This is hard. And uh, if your father is, is killed, that place becomes like a fetish in some ways, because it's part of him. The land is like him, so you cannot really sell. Or you are discussing all the time if, if it's like if you have a house, an old house here from your parents, and you have to decide, all the siblings, what to do with that big, impossible house. And, and there are quarrels, and it's very difficult. And the voices. Uh, I think that if uh, love is in the eye of the beholder, I think reading is in the ear of the hearer, how do you say? 
because w w the stories, the first readings you do are the stories you hear or the stories they read to you. And in my case, in my case, I grew up with 10 women in, at home and, and one man. So the voices for me are, voice, are women voices all the time. And uh, I have very deep in, my, in me, uh, the, the, yeah, these women voices. So when I wrote the book, uh, two of the voices are of two women, two sisters. And the, and the third one is, is a voice of a man, of a gay man who lives here in New York. And uh, OK, I tried to, when I read the book, um, when I read the book, when I listened to the book, I was trying to, to repeat the rhythm, the, the words, the way of narrating of my sisters, of my mother. And um, that's, that was the. the that was the technique, a very simple technique, a very uh, ear technique, uh, well, with which a, I wrote the book. Yeah. It's an auditory technique, and yet at the same time, you have to listen very carefully when you're trying to listen to people from, say, your childhood, especially if they're people who are no longer alive. And I wonder about that activity. Is it something that takes a lot of time to hear those voices? Or are they always within you? It was easy because is it is well known that women speak uh, first and better than men, and I was the only man, and I couldn't really speak well. So I I was hearing all the time to these <laughs> incredible women. Uh, so as I couldn't really speak, I decided to write, <laughs> and I began writing letters to my father because I when I finally found the words for saying something, I, they already had said everything perfectly. <laughs> and uh, it was too late. So yes, I, I, yes, it, it's the, only, the, the only thing I had was my ears all the time, yes, and, and then writing, then writing, yes. Well, I'm, if they were responsible for making you a writer, I think we all owe them a huge debt of thanks. <laughs> um, Rugan. I was interested in how you chose the particular construct, the dramatic construct that you chose to tell your story about a young couple who are very much in love and also have an erotic relationship and how because they were childless and, and appeared to not be successful and were not going to be successful in the future, how that strained them. How did that novelistic concept come to you of creating those characters in that situation to tell your story? Um, so, in the எங்க Tamil Nadu, Kuripa Tamil Nadu, the Marikulan, the Illa, the Varkal Padakudi, Avaste, Avangala, and the Samoham Epudi Park, the Avang like Yana Madriana, Kasta, the Kuruka, the Gara, the Inaki Varako, Anubuchitru Kudi or Rushenda. Analana and a Sutu Tarthalai Kudi, Palapir and Al Maripatrik, and I air can away in the Oshin Samadama, the Mayama Churu, Sirikadi, Eldir. In the theme and a Katoni and Eldum Bode, either on a character in the Vishayam and a Katon of the Odania, the kind of character and a Manasala, Urua Haram Chichi. Nereya Samangal Patina or a character or Vahai Madriana or a typical character on the Urua Kurundan and Vichipanwe. Anna, this Samayo and the character Kinirko Kudia or individuality. Aduvo, Adalande, Varano, Abdina and Nepang. In the novel, you can see the name of the character. You can see the character. And the character is the same as the other character. You can see the same as the other character. You can see the same as the other character. You can see the same childless young couple and their hardships they face in the society. 
This theme has been long time in my heart because I come from a state, Tamil Nadu, where even today, how the childless couple face various problems and issues. Even today, the society treats them in a very bad manner if a woman is not having a child. I have seen this all through my life, and I have written this theme already in a short story. This typical uh, character, whenever I choose a character for my novels, I always see to that that the character is a typical character, but still, there is individuality in each character. So when I uh, chose these characters and I wrote my novel, and after finishing my novel, when I read it, I remembered whom I have replicated in that characters were my grandfather and grandmother. In the character, Rendipero, the Yochi Patapo, the Anga, Tata, Party, Rendipero, Unga, Rumpa, Vaisana, Kalatakuda, Apollo, Nunyama, in the Kapulonga, Avanga, Tata, and Party, Pesik, Shame Patina, Pon, Santa Porto Gramadri, Yerku, Ana, Urthur, Urthur, Prince Riku Matanga, and the Madriano or Tanmai, Angita in the Chi, Avanga Luda, Avanga Hundur, Yella Vaisal and Karpana Pana, Pretty Panga. Abdin Pata in the novel or a good here and the character and a Pinati Tonic, Elena, Elithi Mudicha the Capro. Apollo particular on my editor of the Munadi, which it is the ceremony. But Edo no Manasa Irinda Varid, Abdi Pakum Bodena, Unger and Duberta, the character of Chirkana and a Tonic. To say about my grandfather and grandmother, they were always very intimate in their relationship. They used to fight a lot, but still they don't, uh, they don't get separated. They still fight a lot, but still stay together. Uh, so after finishing my novel, when I imagine, I could find out that I have been inspired by them and have uh, written only their end days in my novel. Um, I just to follow up on this, Rugan, as I mentioned before, uh, he had to deal with a lot of controversy and censorship and finally triumphed on behalf of, I'd say, not only himself, but writers everywhere and freedom of expression. Were you surprised at the reception that you had to go through such a saga in terms of the censorship and the controversy? நான் வந்து இந்த நாவலுக்கு இந்த மாதிரியான ஒரு எதிர்ப்பெல்லாம் வரும்னு எதிர்பார்த்து நான் எழுதல நாவல் 2010 ல நான் தமிழ்ல எழுதி பப்ளிஷ் ஆச்சு வந்த சமயத்திலே நாவலுக்கு வந்து ஒரு நல்ல ஒரு கவனம் இருந்துச்சு என்னுடைய நாவல்கள்ல நிறைய ரீடர்ஸ் க்கு போய் சேர்ந்த நாவல் இதுதான் அப்படி நினைக்கிறேன் அதுக்கு முன்னாடி நாலு நாவல் எழுதி இருக்கேன் இது அஞ்சாவது தான் நான் எழுதின நாவல் ஆனா இதுதான் வந்து அதிகமான ரீடர்ஸ் ரொம்ப குறஞ்ச காலத்துல போய் சேர்ந்த ஒரு நாவல் அது Anala na unta inda mario ana uru idu uru prachani kuriya da irukunu na ne kuncha guda na ne nekivel la. 2013 la idu English la India la penguin random most first publish pan na anga. Adu publish pan na duka aparan da unta inda prachana na ke inda novel samadha mana prachana torangche. Mila anta samaytala na ne na na nche ampli na. In the Maru ஒரு Prechena, Varakudi, Varu, Abdin, Terinjirinda, in the novel load a farm of the Vera Madrin and Mati Eldir in the Kla Abdin and Akthonich. Nay the Londu or realism Abdin Granda or Vadivandan and Edith Telden. But if the flow sensitive on our Shema on the the அப்ப ஒரு ரைட்டருக்கு பாத்தீங்கன்னா பலவிதமான ஃபார்ம் டெக்னிக் இதெல்லாம் இருக்கு. ஒண்ணு ரொம்ப குறச்சல் கிடையாது. நிறைய நம்ம கற்பனைகள்ல நிறைய உருவாக்க முடியும். ஆனால் இந்த விஷயத்தை இன்னொரு வகையில கூட நாம சொல்லி இருந்திருக்கலாம். அப்படி எனக்கு தோணுனது உண்மைதான். ஆனா ஒரு இந்த நாவலை வந்து எங்க பிரச்சனைக்கு உரியதா மாறுனதுக்கு முக்கியமான காரணம் என்னன்னு நான் நினைக்கிறேன்னா Ilekite Vasika Kudye and the Paichi Adu in a Poduman Alavuk Samutala Varala Abdingrada and a Kapatonich. And the Prechana Panunga Melanak or Peria Kovo in the Lam Varala, Ur Parida Pantana Kate Patati. Yen Sona or Navala Varumbodi, 
அந்த கேரக்டர்களை அதில் வரக்கூடிய விஷயங்கள் எல்லாத்தையும் அப்படியே நேரடியாக வாழக்கூடியவர்களாக அப்படியே எடுத்துக்க வேண்டிய அவசியம் கிடையாது நாவலில் வந்து கற்பனைக்கு எவ்வளவோ இடம் இருக்குது ஆனால் அந்த கற்பனையை தாண்டி படிக்கக்கூடியவர்களுக்கு இது உண்மை அப்படின்னு தோண வைக்கிறதுக்கு ஒரு ரைட்டர் நிறைய விஷயங்கள் செய்வாங்க ஆக அந்த வகையில் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா அது நான் வந்து ஒரு ரொம்ப வெற்றிகரமாக தான் எழுதியிருக்கிறேன்னு எனக்கு தோணுச்சு I did not expect so much controversies and um, issues when I released this novel. This novel I uh, published in my language in the year 2010. I had a lot of readers. Uh, before this novel, I have written four novels and this is my fifth novel. This, is a, but this particular novel has reached more readers with little span of time. So I did not think that it will uh, create so many issues and problems. until it was translated in the year 2000, 2013 it was translated into english and it was published by the pen queen publishers uh, it's then where i started facing problems when i started facing uh, controversies i thought that i could have changed the form uh, in which i told this particular theme because uh, realism is a central theme of my story Uh, but the society is so sensitive that it was not able to take this core issue uh, since a writer has many forms and techniques to say uh, the realistic uh, realistic uh, theme they could still um, improvise and still they could have taken it in other form i thought that but still what i felt that uh, i thought initially that i could have written in another form but later i felt that the society has no proper guidance in in reading a literature they are very in a infant stage in reading a literature uh, i did not have any anger on people who raised this controversies i just uh, pity them um, so what i thought is a writer still uh, because that is a writer's victory to uh, bring the reality of life as a central theme is a writer's victory and i think i have done it do have face more controversies thank you um i i just want to let everybody know i'm going to open it up to audience questions after one more question for me so any of you that have any please please jump in um i wanted to talk first of all i wanted to say it's interesting to me that farm as a concept comes out in all three writers one is called the farm in preetees the family has the where they live the estate where they live is called the farm and murugan is a farmer and what does that mean um i wanted to both hector and preeti talk about the concept of nostalgia and they they talk about it not as a happy thing necessarily but also as something that can uh, ache hector is uh actually points out nostalgia means nostos in greek to return and algia in greek in to ache so nostalgia is an ache to return preeti has the character jivan say nostalgia is a sickness i wonder if you two could talk a little bit about that concept and how it is woven through your story and then we're going to take questions Well um the point you make about this relationship between the three books and this idea of the farm is an interesting one because I've been thinking about it while we've been here and of course Peramal's work is from the farm it it, it is fr- rooted in him as a writer and I think to a certain extent the family who live on the farm in in your work as well are trying to hold on to a concept idea of home um in the farm in we that are young there's nothing farm like about it except they make money so we're looking at three different stages of a kind of economic progress sitting right here at this table in a way and the the five kids in the in the book re- reflect that um in india which has moved from a very socialist economic through the 90 in the 70s through the 90s where capitalism took over um we look at a complete difference of social change that has gone on fast forward so by the time you get to um these different young people in the in the in the book they each come from a different generation with a different relationship to money um 
In terms of nostalgia, I think Jeevan's attitude really reflects that. He thinks it's a kind of a sickness. Um, he credits his mother with giving it to him because she was a person who left India, came here to America, and yet still tried to cling on to this idea of her home, which actually didn't want her. Uh, so she has this sort of fix in her mind that somehow this was better as it was. But when he goes back to India after 15 years, he realizes that that sense of nostalgia is completely misplaced and capitalism has just gone insane in this country, which in a way he wasn't expecting. He's almost affronted by that development. Um, for the rest of the novel, I guess, all of them are trying to capture something to do with childhood, which connects with the idea of home. And really, I suppose their home is in each other. And the memories that each of them have of a childhood are tinged with that nostalgia, that sickness, that somehow we were happier then. I was so nostalgic here in Mr. Marugan because um, when I was 22 years old, uh, words were very important in Colombia. And I was expelled of the university because I, I wrote against the Pope. So when words are important, they, they censor. They, 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 so I'm a, a little bit nostalgic of censorship. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, because when words are important, uh, because think, have you ever read a tweet by Mr. Trump protesting for a novel? No, they don't read novels. They don't care about novels. <laughs> he, he's always protesting for, I don't know, for a new, for, for a news program, for a nonfiction book. Or, uh, they, they, he would like to censor, to make a censorship of that, but not of a novel. And no, novels are no important, but it's beautiful that in India, novels are still important. In Colombia, they don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 but but uh, I put in the book three approaches of nostalgia. Uh, there are two words in German that uh, for that is uh, Heimweh, that is the the pain of house, the pain of the house. So literally, the nostalgia, and then there is the Fernweg, that is the nostalgy of distant places, nostalgy in some ways. So in my book, um, Antonio, as he lives here in New York, he's feeling nostalgia uh, many times. Even if, if he doesn't like nostalgia because it, you become very sad and things, he, he cannot, uh, he's feeling nostalgia sometimes for smells, uh, flavors, uh, pers people, mm, uh, rivers, uh, I don't know, landscape. Uh, uh, Pilar is living in the farm, she, so she cannot feel nostalgia because she's there, she's there. And when you are in the place where, where you want to live, it's, it's okay. And Eva, who hates the farm, she really hates the farm and she wants to, to sell the farm. She, she feels exactly the opposite of nostalgia. She, she feels fernweh, so nostalgia for distant places. She wants to go away and to forget the past. The past is terrible for her. And I think we, we have these opposite um, psychological uh, things that are sometimes you want to remember, but many times you also want to forget. And I felt that in me many times, that I want to forget and that I want to remember. Nostalgia is very close to remembering, and the Fernweh, the opposite, is that you want to, to forget. Thank you. That's beautiful. Do we have any questions? We have a few minutes for questions. I'd ask that we keep the answer short because we want to get a few questions in. Uh, English le novel translation anad naala tham prachna vandhi chinnu naane naane kila novel ke prachna vandhi dukaan karanam vandhi India udaiye arasiyal sural maarinade anda vishengalam pala pinani kile irkude 
அதனால் இங்கிலீஷில் வந்ததுக்கு அப்புறம் தான் பிரச்சனைன்னு இல்லை உண்மையில் வந்து பிரச்சனை நடந்தது லோக்கலில் தான் லோக்கல் ஸோ எங்கள் என்னுடைய சொந்த ஊரில் தான் வந்து பிரச்சனை நடந்தது அதனால் அது அதனுடைய மூலம் அந்த பிரச்சனைக்கு மூலம் வந்து எங்கேருந்து இங்கிலீஷில் படித்ததுக்கப்புறம் யாராவது ஊருக்கு சொல்லி வந்ததா அல்லது ஊரில் இருக்கக்கூடியவர்களே படிச்சுட்டு யாராவது சொல்லி வந்ததா என்ன பின்னணியில் அதை எடுத்தாங்க அப்படின்னு தெரியாது அந்த பிரச்சனையை செஞ்சவங்களில் எனக்கு தெரிய ஒரு நைன்டி நைன் பர்சன்டே பர் பர்சன்டேஜ் பேர் வந்து அந்த நாவலை படிக்கவே இல்லை ஆமாம் அதுதான் வந்து உண்மை I wouldn't say that the translation was an issue in my novel. Uh, the main problem, I would say, is Indian political uh, changes. Um, that's the main problem, how they, uh, the freedom of speech and expression has been, become very uh, stringent over there. So that's another problem. I would say the root cause is um, the people, after translation, people here, I mean, the Tamil people here, Maybe they have read the translated book and they told my people in the native because I faced all the issues only in my native place. So, and I, could, and I would also like to say that 99% of the people who were against this novel did not read the novel. They just... <laughs> Thank you. That's a very good point. Uh, another question? Anybody else? Hector, do you, would you take if, that? If I have to. If you have the urge to explain yourself in a different language, mm -hmm. because it's reaching a different audience, are you aware of a different, in other words, if you're, if you're here in Brooklyn uh -huh. presenting your book, are you aware of the fact that it's a completely different audience than if you were presenting it at home? Okay. Uh, maybe yes. What I did was we have a small, uh, book festival in Medellin, in my city, and I invited the translator to go there. Well, they invited the translator to discuss translation, and then I, I took her to the farm. So she saw the context, and uh, I, I have not read the, the, the translation, only some pages that I love, and I think she put all the context, all the, all the smells, all the rain, all the rivers, all the rain. So I hope if it's a good translator, she will do all the work. <laughs> and she is a very good translator. Preeti, you want to speak to that? Yeah, I do actually, because I, I do think of my work as a translation of Shakespeare's language and a form. <laughs> Thank and, you. Yeah. Um, I also include in the novel several um, different languages, one of which is Hindi, there is also some Urdu and Sanskrit, and there is also some gibberish and some made up languages. Um, and the reason for that is because I'm trying to express something about how multilingual we all are actually, and how if we come from um, India and Britain, or if, if we come from cultures which have been colonized, whether we're the colonizer or the colonized, we all live in that multiplicity together. So it is the question of trying to explain that, yeah. I also think it's true just in terms of family and the fragility of family, that families tend to speak in their own languages to each other, even if they're all speaking in English or another language, uh, we have shorthand we use with each other that we don't use necessarily with anyone else. Um, we have to conclude now. We could, I could go on with these guys for a long time. I'm sorry we have such a short time. However, you guys will have the opportunity to meet them and have them sign your books so um, they're going to be signing at table H, H for hamburger, outside the building. Bank Street Books will be selling their books from there. So authors, will you please bring your beautiful name cards to the signing table? And we'll all clear out for the next program, but not till we give these guys a big hand. Do you think it's a Korean language in some way?